Welcome to How to Deal When the Shit Gets Real podcast. I'm Rietta and I'm Connie and we are two crazy cousins talking about how to deal. So today we're actually going to talk good good things about our family because our family doesn't just suck. They're a little crazy, but we do love them. And talking about family support, Connie's giving me the so so <laughs> over the video. Because <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it is true. Especially with our family. Lord help us. <laughs> yep. They're great. Uh-huh. Sure. Uh-huh. I'm just sure. kidding. <laughs> Grandma's great. We're going to keep plugging Grandma. Grandma's going to love our podcast. <laughs> right? Hey, no, I love my mom. I like your mom. I, I love all of our aunts, honestly. They are just opinionated. That is the nice way to put it. They're all I say, opinionated. That's the way to put it. You're welcome. Uh, I'm a very nice person. Thank you. <laughs> but they are we are supportive of the most. Opinion. So we are definitely going to talk about that and how important it is to have family support, especially once you have your own family. Mm-hmm. And just kind well, of all things I don't really know about that. But. I mean, I have a husband. I don't have a kid. I can't tell. Yeah, you know. when you have, I think when you have kids or a kid, because I only have one, but kid, kids, whatever, you really do realize how much you do need your family. Actually, I think my mom is very disappointed that she, her first she has her first grandchild mm-hmm. and they don't want her support necessarily oh yeah like she tried sad. giving them, she tried giving them books about feeding and and having a newborn and a baby get a good night's sleep and how to do that and she was like I don't think they particularly care (laughs) the hard part too it's hard to find the line of what's being supportive and what's crossing the line and trying to be the parent instead of just being the grandparent she was just trying to get because she was having a hard time getting him to sleep so she's like oh here try this book oh no that's a very good intention oh no my mom only has good intentions she's never trying to be a dick and then the other thing that she struggled with is she wants to spend more time with her grandkid, but she doesn't want to seem pushy. She It, it really is like towing a line. She doesn't it want is. to be... She doesn't want to be there and have them not want her there. She's offering her help. If you don't want her there, then she's not going to go. But she wants to. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it'll get easier, too, as he gets older and as they have more kids. Because as he gets older, too, and he can talk (laughs) and do all that. Your face. I love it. I wish you guys could (laughs) You know, that was too funny. She she hand signaled to me that they were having four kids, and I only have one. And my husband and I are talking about adopting, so like two is the most for us. So four to me is terrifying. My head doesn't well, go back okay, to the mom. I should say that it was four if we could afford them, but yeah. she would prefer four. Well, my hat definitely goes off to my the brothers. Mom. This. They would probably be like, "Oh my god, Connie, you're so judgy." <laughs> it's not my fault. She told me. Yeah, she told you. But my hat definitely goes off to people that's got three and four and five kids because nope. I couldn't do it. So my hat definitely goes off to those people. Yeah. One. Two, one. Two. Maybe two. That's good for me. I just don't want to be outnumbered. That's my thing. Oh, my God. Are you and Tom talking? Because that's exactly what Tom said to me yesterday because my mom was asking me about babies as per usual. Of course. She just wants to be a grandma again. Well, I think the difference is, is that it would be my child and she would never be afraid of telling me what she thinks. She doesn't want to tell Luke or Audrey what she thinks because she's afraid that they wouldn't appreciate it, that she would just piss them off and then they would pretty much never come back. If she told them how she felt or the truth or her suggestions, she would be the the negative support. It wouldn't be supportive. Well, this is a good putting your wants and needs onto new parents. And she doesn't want to do that. Well, this is a good lesson, actually, that we're talking about. Because, I mean, the only way you're going to know is if you ask, right? Mm -hmm. And they can say no. And it doesn't have to be this big snowball effect of, oh, well, you asked to know. I don't want you to ever come over anymore. It can just, it sh- we should be able to have simple communication with each other, right? Hey, I'm interested in watching him every Friday and you guys can go out or whatever her want might be. But they're never going to know her want if she doesn't say it. 
And they can always say no, but that doesn't mean, well, now you're cut off. And speak of the devil, guess who just called me? My mom. (laughs) She knew I was talking, guys. She knew. You'll have to ask her later if her ears were burning. Yeah, probably. I I felt this disturbance in the force. (laughs) May the force be with you. (laughs) But yeah, that's a good lesson. I like that, that you actually brought that up. Because it is. I get people that are always afraid to offend other people. But you have to ask. And the worst thing that can happen is the person can be like, hey, appreciate it, but no thanks. Or, hey, I'm going to do it this way, but I appreciate your info. But you have to ask. And see, and that's already kind of happened. Mm -hmm. When Isaac was first born. Wow, I'm really doing great with this names thing. It's all right. Doing real great. We'll just tell Luke later. Well, we're just, I'm not telling them about this podcast. They don't need to know. (laughs) Anyway. Anyway, it's beside the point. When he was first born, my mom was out of a job Mm -hmm. and she wanted to let me stay over. Let me help watch the baby while you clean because the baby came early. So you don't have a nursery set up. Let me help you. Mm -hmm. And they said no. So since then, she doesn't really want to give her opinion because she's like, well, they've already, every time I've offered to help, they've already said, no, I'm not going to keep pushing. Is well, that, that makes sense. It's just that they don't want any help. But I guarantee you, as a mom of some, an older kid, as he gets older, they're going to be the opposite. They're eventually be going, Mom, we need help. Mom, we need to get out of the house. Like, I can't do this. It's going to happen. They just haven't reached that point yet. Really? You think that with age, it, you get more, okay, I need more help. Honestly, because you'd like, think that they're the most needy when they're infants no not really because they sleep a lot i mean Mm. and she's breastfeeding so nobody else can really feed him yeah well you know (laughs) we're doing way too much secret stuff they can't see us today i'm sorry i'm sorry (laughs) i'll slap her later guys anyway honestly when they're babies they do so much sleeping and because she is breastfeeding unless she's pumping of course you know so luke can help it's it's very limited on what people can help you with. And because, you know, unless something's going on, unless they're like colicky or sick or whatever, they're not really all that bad when they're infants. They sleep a lot. We say that his main job is looking cute because, oh my God, he's just such a smiley baby and sticking out his tongue. It's the greatest. I've never seen a baby just stick out his tongue so much. I saw just like, uh, it's so so great. (laughs) <laughs> but now once they start moving and being able to get into things, that's when you can't turn your back for a second because then they're pulling down the dishes, you know, whatever. They're into everything. Everything goes into the mouth. That's oh, when yeah. it gets comp. That's when you're like, okay, somebody come over so I can take a shower. Because <laughs> I can't leave. <laughs> Actually, it was funny because mom was talking about me as a kid and how I didn't start walking until like 18 months because I was just a little princess and I was just <laughs> fine sitting down on a blanket and You're like, like I'm good. I didn't care to move unless somebody picked me up. That's hilarious. <laughs> so it took me so much longer to walk because I was like, blanket with some toys? I'm good. You also I don't, did- I- more you know you and also it's didn't have hair for two years <laughs> i love that you didn't have hair for like two years yeah mm-hmm. it was adorable and even with the big bows on my head people were still like what a cute boy <laughs> i still want to know how your mom stuck the bows to your head with no hair you know it was headbands it oh, was, it was big, a headband but- yeah. I swear at one point she just had a bow on there and I was like, that's magic. How did she get that on there? Because it was very blonde, wafy, you didn't really see it, hair. That's mm-hmm. how. Yeah, poor Connie. She didn't have any hair for like two years. <laughs> I'm infamous for that. It was the cutest thing ever, though. You Do you remember it or, it, or do you just remember pictures? No I, no, I remember it because I was like... You were old enough. I was old enough. I was like seven when you were born. So. Okay. And then, you know, two years. So, memories from when you're a kid, it's very, you know, up and down. It's not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like you never remember, like, everything from when you were five. You know, you remember, like, the big things. I don't even think I remember anything from five, but, you know. (laughs) 
another person was telling me that they have memories from when they were two. So I was like, interesting. Supposedly some people do. Supposedly, I don't know. Well, and I feel like it was mainly more of like a feeling. She remembered being put down in her crib and being mad because she didn't want to be in her crib. Well, that's like, a legitimate so feeling for a two-year-old. Feeling. Huh? That's a legitimate feeling for a two-year-old. Oh, yeah. And mom uh, was- but your mom what? I was just going to say, and mom was telling everybody how I used to say, I hate you when I was little. And the boys never did that, but I did. I was like, that's because I was sassy. <laughs> I've always you were been sassy. sassy mom. I've, and I've always been sassy. It's just my personality at this point. Again, another shrink not trait changing. also. Yeah. That's also a well, family. Okay, but the thing is about the sassiness, it can also be misconstrued as being mean. Because, I mean, I remember growing up and occasionally I'd be like, Lydia's so mean. Just because I didn't understand that she was being sarcastic. No, she's mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh. No, she. I guess I shouldn't say that. She's one of those people that can dish it, but she can't take it. She wants it to work her way. Like her way or the highway. And that's just her personality. Yep. Pretty much. And I can tell you, too, going back to our family supportive kind of annoying topic, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Um, Me being far away from family, I definitely wish I wasn't at times because when like Kyle's gone and I don't have family around, I would definitely like there to be because there's definitely nights where I'm like, I could just use an hour to myself, just to just an hour. Can somebody come take him? And of course, you know, your mom, if you called her and be like, Ma, I need an hour, you know, take a bath. All over it. Oh, yeah. Any most moms would be like, I will be there in five minutes. Yes. So I definitely miss that. Do you feel like you've gotten a lot of help with support with Jackson or has it been pretty difficult? It's like just when you figure it out, you move. We figured it out in California. Like we have really good friends Mm -hmm. that if it came down to it, I could call them and be like, hey, X, Y, Z is happening. Can you take Jackson for an hour? You know, whatever it may be. And I feel like I've just recently found some people here. I actually had one of the girls, her son played football with Jackson she has been really awesome. Like she'll randomly text me and be like, Hey, are you doing okay? Do you want, do you want me to come get Jackson? He can come over for a little while, which is great. So there are some definite perks when you make the right friends that understand that are like, Hey, let me help you out. But because we move, it feels like as soon as you figure it out, you have to figure it out all over again. Uh, rough. And you have the disadvantage of your parents, you don't have as much family around you. Right. You can't just call your mom and she can't just come over because there's a whole continent between exactly. you and her, which is unfortunate. The only, po- not positive, but at least this helps, is communication. I mean, you can mm-hmm. FaceTime, you can video chat, you can do phone calls. I mean, so that more helpful if you have a specific question like, Jackson's doing this weird thing. I don't know what. Mm-hmm. just think about it just doing something that I don't like how do I get him to stop or what rules should I put in place or like what do you think about that getting somebody's opinion like it's always nice to have your mom's opinion yeah that that is the one thing that's great about technology we have Skype and FaceTime and you know all those wonderful things so yeah I can call her and hey he's got this rash yeah what does this rash look like to you before I take him to the doctor and she can be like oh it's just heat rash don't worry about it or "Ooh, that doesn't look so good you know take him in yeah exactly so there is that that is a good thing too but I definitely miss being close and with grandma for example you know she's 90 I hope we have her for another 10 years I would I mean that would be wonderful lord knows how long we're gonna have her and I hate being far away because I can't spend time with her I liked going to see her every week I miss seeing her weekly yeah, and same with Jackson, because oh, yeah. he has a advantage over most of the great-grandkids that he will remember grandma. He'll remember his great-grandma. Mm-hmm. I don't really remember any of my great-grandmas. Oh, I don't so either. that's one advantage, is he will actually have memories. Mm-hmm. And it's one disadvantage, because you guys are far away. So he has a few, but not as many as you may have wanted. Right. And uh, great grandma, you know, she tends to bond with him the most so far. 
because he, you know, he talks the most. You know, it's easier for gra- Grandma can communicate with him really easy. She can't communicate with the little, little ones. She holds them, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, who's not going to hold a baby? Who doesn't like that? I mean, that's very true. Men really aren't baby holders, but women will always hold the babies. A hundred percent. And it was adorable at Christmas. One of the uh, g- great grandkids mm-hmm. went up to my little new nephew mm-hmm. and they were like, baby, and touching Aww. it. Baby, poking his face. It was really funny. That's and so then cute. they were like, no, don't, don't touch the baby. Look at the baby. Leave the baby alone. Or you have to be it, like nice, gentle, nice to the baby. Yes, exactly. They were all about the baby, though. All about it. Uh, who doesn't love a newborn baby? Pretty much. Pretty much. I know. I think they're more fun, too, as they get older. Because it's so hard when they can't talk to you. And, like, you just want to do whatever you can to make it better. And when they're just crying and you're like, I don't know. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Yep. And what's even funnier is that my mother-in-law and my mom were arguing over who would see my baby the most. Atlanta. And I'm like, guys, I will. I'll be seeing my baby the most. Because it's also, my baby. Can you at least wait Stop until that. I'm pregnant before yeah. we have this argument? Like I said, they're all very into, everyone is very into and interested in me and having a baby. I mean, we've got so many babies in our family right now. Can't everybody just focus on the babies we do have? <laughs> Apparently not. And then his mom, all of her grandbabies are, are grown. So, yeah. She's like, give me a new one. <laughs> I like that new baby. That new baby smell. Exactly. Which but, they yeah. do have a smell, by the by. And it's the best. Yes. Isaac has that smell. I like it. Oh. It's- I used to smell Jackson's head all the time. It just mm. smells so good. The smell it just makes me happy. And they fresh out feet. of the factory. <laughs> yep, fresh out of the factory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. So since we're talking about family support and you kind of brought up the in-laws, that's something we should touch on, at least I think. I don't know, maybe you can. Getting support, do you feel you get as much support from your in-laws as you do, you know, your mom? Mm, depends on what I think they do give support Mm -hmm. it's just different and it's more support for Tom Mm -hmm. they're more support because it's their child right so they want more interaction with Tom yes they want to help us out occasionally yes they want to do stuff with us but I view it as it's more support for Tom and also, let's face it, I don't know if you believe that this is true, but I always see it as, like, my mom always goes, like, above and beyond. It's just stuff in general. She will not only give you advice, but then she will give you that book. Then she will just show up five minutes later. You know what I mean? Something mm-hmm. necessarily expect. And there's this more scheduled. Okay, mm-hmm. we have you down for April 21st to come over for dinner. <laughs> more scheduled yeah. a little bit. They have more communication and they talk more to Tom. And I'm just kind of there whenever they invite us over or out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they support him individually. And then mm-hmm. when I'm there maybe they want to give me advice but it's more of like niceties they're not really giving me like advice for the most Mm -hmm. part Mm -hmm. they're talking to me about how my day is and the sky is blue um and they have have, uh, on occasion given us monetary support for the wedding Mm -hmm. but everybody all of the parents did but my mom's like this is what I think here's a book here's the literature on it because that's just her Mm -hmm. so what do you think how do your in-laws work well my mom's kind of similar and into a fact obviously because they're related so she has the solution for everything or she thinks she has the solution for everything so she tries to give you the solution everything which is really sweet she's always like yeah so she's always trying to problem solve I don't have a mother-in-law, so I can't really comment on that. I feel like the father-in-law is kind of different anyway because he's a guy. I think if we asked him for anything, he would probably give it to us. If we were like, hey, we're 
500 bucks short on bills. Can we borrow it from you? I don't think he'd even bat an eye. Not that we would ask him, but I think if we did, he would do it without even Mm -hmm. thinking about it. But there's definitely not as much open communication as there is with my parents. Like his dad doesn't really call. Your your father-in-law calls Kyle though? No. Wouldn't no? Really? Oh, okay. No, they don't really talk at all either. Their relationship's kind of interesting, especially since Kyle lost his mom so young. I feel like they never really bounced back from it, if that makes sense. No, we don't really hear from him very often. I did get a birthday card. Nice. And so that was nice. Like, he does send, like, birthday cards and stuff. But, yeah, he doesn't really call or talk to us or anything. Yeah, I think I welcome, actually, my father-in-law more than my mother-in-law. Yeah, I have to say, it's kind of nice not having to worry about that. I mean, well, Kyle's they're dad just is... two. They're very, just very different people. Yeah. I mean, Kyle's dad is married. Like, he did get remarried, but... It's like, different. And nobody likes her. Oh. So. <laughs> like, literally nobody likes yeah. her. None of the sisters. Grandma, his grandma's since passed, but when she was still alive, nobody likes her. So... Nice. It just doesn't even... She just doesn't even count. Yeah. And actually, it's interesting that I have my two in-laws have divorced mm-hmm. and his dad got remarried, but I I like her. I mean, there's been some rough patches, but she's pretty nice. She's very nice and and complimentary. And they both absolutely love me and I get more of a loving feeling from them versus but see it's two different people and Mm -hmm. his mom and I were more like sarcastic and funny to each other Mm -hmm. it's not necessarily oh my daughter-in-law she's fabulous it's like hey caddy what are you doing now crazy kids something (laughs) like that it's just it's a totally different relationship she likes to drink more have more fun and stuff Mm -hmm. like that versus his dad and mother-in-law are not really they want to have fun but they're not super drinking and they're like always just very nice and complimentary toward me they're we do have fun and chit chat and stuff but they're not as sarcastic as me and my mother-in-law are to each other yeah, so like it's just, just like it's really just really different. Yeah, and that's just difference in personalities. Also, oh, yeah, it's just it, the supportive aspect is just kind of different too. So, and like I said before, it's definitely they text message and call mm. Tom a lot more than they do me. But it was really funny. So we, his aunt died. That's not funny. Mm-hmm. But his dad sent us a little card, mm-hmm. right? And I thought it was a mistake. It's because it said to Tom from Tom on the envelope. You could see the little screen. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the hell? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. What is this? So I had to call him and like, hey, did you send us this? I wasn't sure if this was a mistake or not. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> it was really funny. Kyle's sister, his full sister, her and I will talk. We'll text or FaceTime, especially now that she has a baby. So we'll mm-hmm. call and text. We'll stay in contact. And she's usually pretty supportive. Kyle's deployed. She'll text me and be like, hey, are you and Jackson okay? I imagine if we lived closer, we would probably be even closer. Mm -hmm. We would go out to dinner together and stuff like that. But because we aren't, we just do the best we can pretty much. It's that whole continent thing again. I know. Well, even (laughs) when we were in California, it's hard. Because, you know, when you have your own family and flying is not cheap anymore i mean you can find some deals every now and then but yeah it's not the greatest and especially when you have a family and you're paying for you know three or four or five people it's expensive Mm -hmm. for sure especially from hawaii it's it's not cheap oh yeah that's why i haven't gone down there yet yeah sometimes you can find deals though my parents got here for like 380 bucks which is like unheard of that it well, but isn't it because they flew to California, stayed in California for a while, then went to oh. Hawaii? No, that's just that was, how non- it was that was nonstop from Chicago all the way here. Oh, a nonstop fun. flight from Chicago to here for three eighty. Oh, that is good. It was really good. Three eighty a person, just to clarify, which is still really good. 
That's no, that's still really good. Yeah, I think it was United. I think they found it. We randomly found it. You know, it's one of those things, which is why I always check. You have to keep page. checking. Is yeah, you thing. have to keep looking. If yeah. you, you have to, you have to be dedicated. Okay, you have to really keep you checking. Do. I had to keep checking for our, our honeymoon flights. Yeah, you always got to keep checking for that stuff. Mm-hmm. We never had a honeymoon, so I don't know. I guess this is my honeymoon now, living in Hawaii. I mean, I'll take it. I would take it. I'll take Definitely it. Definitely not complain, right? <laughs> With all those beach photos, definitely would not complain. Yeah, yeah, I was on the beach yesterday. Isn't this vacation? <laughs> I was actually going to go today because it's beautiful out, but, you know, you got to do regular life things too, which is hard, <laughs> but you have no to. Fun. But you have to, no matter whether you're in Hawaii or in California, mm-hmm. you still have to do those regular life people things. You do, and even in this beautiful tropical place, I still miss having friend and family support because it really does once you have kids you really do realize how much even though your family drives you crazy they do help you is it ever too much do you ever like say okay this is too much support you are trying to help me too much and i don't i don't agree with you necessarily yeah especially with parenting the last deployment because it was so close when we moved I moved home and I lived with my parents oh god preface this was I absolutely love my parents they are amazing people the fact that they let me and Jackson come stay for eight months with them was a wonderful gift but it is not easy my mom wants to help like we've talked about like you've talked about with your mom but sometimes her help is over the line I'm trying to parent and try to discipline and she's trying to be grandma because you know Mm. grandma spoils And grandma wants to spoil and grandma doesn't want to see him cry and grandma doesn't want to see him be upset, but I have to parent him and it, and And I have to give him limits. Right. And so when I'm telling him, no, you can't watch any more TV. We got to do homework and he's crying and she's like, well, just give him a cookie and it'll be okay. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not how any of this works. Oh my God. And she would have probably gone crazy if grandma would have done that. Oh, absolutely. She would. She still tells a story from when I was like two. Oh God. And we were and we were out to eat. And I guess they used to give you a little tray when you're at a restaurant and they gave you metal spoons, just littler ones. And grandma gave me a metal spoon and I was beating it on this metal tray, making all this noise. And she was yelling at grandma, like, why do you keep giving her this spoon? And then she would give me food and I'd throw it on the floor and she's like, Stop giving her food. I've heard this story ten times. <laughs> You were just a baby. You were doing what comes naturally. Yeah, and actually, uh, that was last night too. When we were at at my mom's house, they were giving a uh, him avocado, mm-hmm. and he was having it, it was interesting because they don't sit him down and feed him. They're like, nah, here's a ball, go for it, kid. And so it was interesting. He got it everywhere. Yeah, it's probably too. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, the one time I found support being overwhelming is Grandpa's funeral, actually, was the worst time. I was so annoyed. Yeah, I already know where you're going with this, but continue, because they don't know. Basically, I just, it was really annoying to me that I kept on being asked, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I am at my grandfather's funeral. Mm -hmm. Why would you ever think that I'm okay can you get over it and can we continue with this I don't yeah can you back up a little can you back up like 10 paces it's not like I was a little kid I was a grown adult right only a few years ago I mean I I can handle it but you coming up to me every couple minutes and saying are you okay I don't really want to deal with this right now I'm dealing with this thing called a funeral and it is happening in front of me and I don't need you Uh uh-huh well and the fact that our aunts think that they can tell me what's appropriate and what's not that was great well and there was also a said uncle that was when the pictures came back he was like look at you and your ugly crying face and i'm like fuck you it's a funeral oh you know which one the one and only Mm, the one and only dick Mm -hmm. i mean you know yeah Uh, i was like what i'm not allowed to cry at a funeral anymore well, I'm can we sorry. Say how I'm... odd it was that um, Grandma now has a photo book of every part of the funeral. I think that is so morbid. 
every there is a photo of the casket going down into the earth. It is like a play by play of Grandpa's funeral, and I think that that is creepy. It is like I would rather have a photo book of all of the memories I made with my significant other versus a photo book of his death. We should do that for her. We should make her a memory one instead, and then it can be replaced. Because you have to admit, it's creepy. It is a little weird. And those pictures that are in that weird photo album, that's what he was making fun of. He's like, look at your ugly cry face, and look at here it is again. I'm like, first of all, it's my grandpa's death and leave my grandpa's funeral. And second of all, my husband is in the military. Every time I hear taps, I cannot help but at least get teary-eyed. Because it's it's taps. And that guy that played it at his funeral, it sounded like a recording. He was so good. He did not miss a note. Tom was really frustrated that they couldn't get the flag right. Oh, yeah, when they folded it? Yeah. It's not but it was, so, it was super cute, though, that Grandma wanted to give the guy a hug. The guy who folded the flag. That's Grandma for he, you. It's because she's adorable. She, she is. But, yeah, that, that was my one super frustrating thing. But, yeah, our family in general can just be overwhelming not even just support, though. It can literally be pretty much anything. You know, it's nice to ask somebody, hey, are you okay? Can I do something for you? Can I get you a cup of tea? Can I get you some coffee? Once they're like, no, I'm okay. Like, once it's been answered once, just leave it alone. They don't know how to leave problems and issues alone at all. Oh, now now my mom's calling. <laughs> They knew. They knew we were talking about them. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Shh. Anyway. (laughs) Exactly. Finishing up where uh, Connie left off about Grandpa's funeral and... And just support and how it can be overwhelming. There clearly is a limit, people. Yeah, there's a limit. And uh, we will... It should be one and it should be done. It's just in general. If you offer your support and it's not taken up, you don't have to keep hammering it. And if something else comes up, you can still offer your support again. They might actually, for any other person, you might take it again this time. Like there Mm -hmm. are different circumstances to where you will take support or maybe not. Or maybe just Mm -hmm. take it under consideration and say thanks. But exactly, uh, I'll handle it from here, you know? (laughs) Or the other thing you can do, which I really liked, not too long after Chris Kyle was killed... And Taya Kyle wrote her book. For people who don't know, I, I'm assuming most people know who Chris Kyle is. Chris Kyle was American Sniper. His wife, Taya, wrote a book called American Wife. And she talked about how hard it was to lose Chris. And when people asked her if she needed help, she probably would have said no. But the difference was people just did it. So that's another way you can help people. If you want to bring a meal by and leave it in their freezer. If you want to come take their kids for an hour and take them to the park or whatever it might be, just do it. Don't even ask. Obviously don't kidnap somebody's kids. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclaimer. But don't kidnap kids. Yeah. yeah. Don't just take their kids. Go in and say, Hey, I'm taking my kid to the ice cream shop. Do you, I'm going to bring your kids with me. We'll be back in 45 minutes. Do something like that. Don't even ask. Just do. And, of course, that's going to apply to certain people, like your best friend or Connie. Or anybody. Yeah, you Don't wouldn't do that. to a random stranger, like, <laughs> hey, I'm going to take your kids for ice cream. Be back in 40. It only applies to certain people. It does. You know, you know those people. <laughs> The people you know, obviously. If something happened to Connie, I wouldn't even think about it. I would just go over there and be like, hey, I'm going to make dinner tonight, okay? You go sit on the couch with Tom or whatever. Exactly. Actually, when Lydia had her, we're super good with this names thing. When Uh, when she had her her (laughs) surgery, the first time she had radiation, mom actually packed up two dinners of manicotti and brought it over to her house. Mm -hmm. So that they would have stuff and they didn't have to worry about cooking. And then I got one and Mitchell got one. My mom's pretty much spent the whole weekend making manicotti because the kids found out. And they're like, wait, do we get one? (laughs) (laughs) See, and that's a a perfect example. Like that's an, and food is such an easy way to help because you know when people are grieving, they're not thinking about eating. 
the fact that you can bring over something and even if you just put it in the freezer and they don't necessarily use it right away, the fact that they have it in their freezer is huge. Well, and just in general, not necessarily just when like somebody dies. Yeah. Going- when they're sick. surgery, when they're sick, when at, there's it's not for any reason. We went over to our friend's house the uh, on Saturday, and I brought, brought a charcuterie board because I'm like, man, I want snacks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess that was more support for myself, but still, it applies. <laughs> so pretty much the moral of the story is food is the love language of all. <laughs> Especially my face. Oh You're my not god! Overweight for no reason, Connie. <laughs> oh. Stuff. that love of cake i love food just as much as you do so yeah and we had a friend she hopefully will be a guest at some point because she's the girl's been through the ringer and she's an amazing person and when she, she first found out she was sick that's what we did we're like hey this saturday we're gonna be at your house we're gonna cook you dinner and I brought her a basket with warm, fuzzy socks in it and a mug for tea. And I brought tea with it. And then we made them dinner. And not even, this happened a while ago, but maybe like a week ago, she tagged me in something on Facebook. And she's like, I wouldn't even be here if you didn't do the things that you did for me. So just things like that. It was really sweet. And so just things like that have a bigger impact, I think, than most people realize. Like, oh, I'm just making dinner. But that dinner ensured that they ate that night. And they didn't have to clean. They didn't have to worry. Yeah, they didn't have to worry. They didn't have to clean up. None of that. So it has a, I think it has a bigger impact than people think that they do. For sure. So yeah, it was super sweet that she sent, she had me like crying. I'm like, excuse me, why don't I go cry in the corner? (laughs) (laughs) Well, and other, and and like another way of support, at least for me, is when I lost my job at Ipsos, Tom was like, he, he, he started making jokes about it. I'm like, it's not funny. He's like, I know, but I want to make you laugh. And I was like, you did, but I'm like, laugh crying. And he gave me a hug. I can't remember what he said. If it was, so, I heard you got fired today. Or like, he made some poor joke. But he just wanted to get me to laugh, really. Pretty much. Yeah. Your husband is pretty much Chandler. Is he? Sure. Kind of. My husband. <laughs> My husband's kind of Chandler, too. Like, he'll make really random jokes. And I'm like, really, babe? <laughs> okay. It's great, though. Hey. No, that's a good, that's another great example. Losing your job and somebody just making a joke to make you smile and, like, forget about it for even five minutes. And he let me have pizza. We ha- we, we don't really do a lot of carbs in our house. and I, But I was like, I lost my job. Can we have pizza? He's like, whatever you want. I'm like, thanks. I was going to make a joke of like, what, does he normally keep you in a dog cage and feed you? (laughs) Yes, yeah, pretty much. No, we just don't normally eat carbs, but I was like, but pizza. And he's like, do you feel bad? I'm like, do you want to eat your feelings? Yeah. (laughs) Not really, but a little. And over here in our house, house, we have pizza every Friday. (laughs) We have steak every Friday. But that's also because we have a kid, and that's his, if he has a good week at school, we have pizza on Friday. Oh, it's a reward. I like it. I think it's more remember- motivation than a reward. Uh, hey, if I have a week, mom will get me pizza. And if he mm-hmm. doesn't, he doesn't get pizza. I do remember, I don't know if this is a shrink thing, but I always remember, like, grandma, it was always Friday night pizzas. At our house, it was always Friday night pizza, and, like, mom and dad would make homemade crust Mm -hmm. a lot of times. I make my own pizza a lot of times, and I make my own crust. My dad's got a killer recipe, and now I have it. But you know what's funny about that? Grandma doesn't even like pizza. What? No, you didn't even know that? Grandma does not like pizza. That's hilarious. She had pizza because grandpa loved pizza. Yeah, she could live without it. She was just like, okay, we'll eat it. I don't particularly yeah. care one way or the other. Because I wouldn't say it. she would hate pizza. Because oh, I've no. seen her eat pizza. Oh, no, she doesn't hate it, but it's not something that she would order purposefully. Yeah, it was because Grandpa wanted it. Yeah, she I got mean, it. I mean, White Castles, though. Let's be real. Why did oh. we go to White Castles? Grandpa oh, that was, that, was Aunt, that was Aunt Barbara's favorite. Yeah, when you oh, picked well, it, all of the uh, Walshes really like the White Castles. Oh, yeah. They come because they don't have it in Denver. I don't know if they still don't, but that was the when we picked up Aunt Barbara from the airport. The first, her first stop was White Castle. Oh yeah, no, and and so are her her boys. They're the exact same way. So that's too funny. 
It's probably a good memory, though, too, of their mom. Probably. I would imagine so, yes. Yes. I haven't had White Castles in eons. <laughs> we had, uh, like, a cheat day, and we had White Castles a, while, a few months ago. But carbs in general, I'm like, wow, when's the last time I made pasta? Never. That's too funny, because... Kyle's coming home finally after like two months. And I was like, I usually ask him what he wants to eat, you know, because he's been eating MREs. For people that don't know what MREs are, they're they're called, it stands for Meals Ready to Eat. And uh, it's basically, it's awful. That's all you need to know. They're not good. <laughs> so I always ask him when he comes home what he wants. And he usually picks something pasta. He likes Italian. So, of course, he was like, I want penny pasta with your homemade spaghetti sauce and Italian sausage. And I was like, all right, you got it. Yum. Yeah. I do love the pasta, but I think my biggest downfall food-wise is the sweets. I think that's our family. We have a sweet tooth. I have a big sweet tooth, for sure. The Girl Scouts got me yesterday. And you were like, hell yeah. (laughs) She was like, would you like some Girl Scout cookies? I was like, yes, yes, I would. (laughs) I would like them all. Thank you. It, It helps when I don't have the food in my house and I just make oh, yeah. low carb stuff but and just the low carb is sweet it's fine it's just not the same they're different textures and tastes yeah and stuff. it's not the same for sure it's I've definitely some stuff not too. the same yeah so since we talked what, what's your favorite Girl Scout cookie I don't even know I want to know either Thin Mints or those peanut butter ones that are covered in chocolate those are my two Yep, I love the. Those are called tagalongs. Oh, are they? I I just I've always just seen like I've never really well, paid attention. It, actually, except for Thin Mints. I think it actually <laughs> varies on on like the regions. Actually, like some places are called tagalongs, and I think some places they're called peanut butter patties. Oh, I don't know, but those are my two favorites. Kyle loves Thin Mints. That's his favorite. Thin Mints are very good. See, at our house, we only ever had the Samoas or Thin Mints, so that's why I leaned more towards Thin Mints and. That's because I didn't discover until I was older the miracle of the peanut butter patty and or tagalong. Yeah, and then like, I was like, oh, this is a contender. <laughs> Jackson loves the Samoas, which I'm kind of surprised. I he's he's picky, and I don't know. It just it's not something I would think a picky eater would. Because it's for. coconut. Ugh. Yeah, it's coconut. Sorry, I, like I just don't like the coconut flakes. I don't mind coconut flour. Oh, my mom hates coconut. I love so it. My mom. Oh, I love it. And there's, have you ever had the, heard the story of mom's 16th birthday and like yes. the one thing that she hates is coconut and grandma makes her a coconut cake. Yep. I remember. I've heard all the stories a million times. <laughs> hey, they have not. <laughs> if you guys haven't figured out yet, our family doesn't let anything go. So, you'll hear the you'll hear the stories these tragic stories 30 times well if you are in our family you will yeah if you're in our family for us, we're, we're not going to try and bring these stories up 30 times because that would be annoying it would be but for anybody who has been raised in our family yeah you hear the same shit over and over and over and over and over but again. we will keep but we will keep bringing up grandma because she's the bomb best and also, it's kind of funny because I feel like the ants kind of put her in the middle of shit. For no reason. Yeah, basically. Grandma used to make us the best birthday cakes. She would make us from scratch. Yeah, she would go cakes. all out. Oh, yeah. She made me one year. I still remember it. She took a Barbie and she put it in the middle and she made Barbie's skirt out of cake. Yes. And I think I had like an ice skating cake one time. I did. I feel like I remember that. Hmm. She made the best oh, cake, yeah. all from all from scratch. None of that. Box I know stuff. she made like a full, except for that it was backwards. But you know what? She doesn't know sports. She made a full baseball diamond mm-hmm. cake. Just the plates were backward, according to somebody. I think like Uncle, one of our uncles said like, "Oh, but this is backwards," and it's like, who really cares? Okay, and everybody's like, "Shut up, Grandma made it from scratch. Don't complain." Yeah, and I think she's made, like, all of, like, the Sesame Street characters. She did some crazy oh, yeah. cakes. She did some all stuff. And now she makes it out of a box. But that's all right. She's 90. <laughs> she's allowed to. She's absolutely allowed to. She doesn't even have to bake anymore, and she still does. I called her last week, and she's like, 
I'm baking for the church bake sale. And I'm like, what are you baking? She's like, two pies, brownies, and cupcakes. And I was like, Jesus Christ, why don't you just make one? Because she has to help. She does. She's a helper. I feel like I got a little bit of baking from grandma and all those times we made cookies for oh, yeah. Christmas. I feel like I've gotten like that baking gene that we all have. <laughs> yeah. Not I feel like I have it too. But, Cause I just made mom's uh, birthday cake, the double layer chocolate. I saw, it, was, oh, it was pretty good. Mom. Even that what's well, wait a minute. It's not her birthday yet. Yeah, no, it's 26. We had it the weekend before. And that's why I made the chocolate cake and the frosting. And it was a low-carb version. And it was it was fine. But low-carb never tastes as good as the real carbs. No, or the real gluten and gluten. And the real reason why I did it is because my sister-in-law has a large gluten allergy. And mom is always concerned about her not being able to, to eat. eat it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this aunt... Yeah. Actually texted me happy birthday. Whoa. Hell. On my birthday, too. On the correct day. But you know what? They started doing that with me, too. And I don't remember ever getting a text message message from either aunt or uncle for my birthday. And this last year and the year before, I started getting actual birthday texts from family members i was like whoa guys she was the only one i think your mom used to always send me one but she didn't this year but she was the only one and i was like whoa what's happening Who right is now? this what's going on well i have this number I'll, saved I'll, I'll, don't worry, i'll go and yell at her i'll be like mom you forgot rietta's birthday how could you <laughs> how um, dare you she's mad at you now yep mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the you weren't being world. supportive <laughs> <laughs> and no, 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 and and then everybody will be mad at each other, and the world will implode because that's how it always happens. Though, yes, this is how our family works, and it'll be a great topic for another time. Yes. But basically, you find out from another person that this person was upset over something little. Everybody finds out. It really doesn't matter to either person but for whatever reason it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger for no apparent reason even though it was no big deal snowball effect it's a little actually it's a little bit it's a little bit of snowball effect mixed with telephone oh yeah because then it's like what i didn't say that yeah pretty much and you're saying some crazy shit and cussing out grandma and we know that that's not the truth nope (laughs) So tell your mom that she's not being supportive of me. <laughs> oh, I will. Thank mom. Just so you know. You need to up your game. All right. So to recap, <laughs> since we're a little off topic right now. I mean, not really. But just to recap, be supportive. But don't be obnoxious. Obnoxious. Or that like lightning cloud following somebody around over their head where it never stops raining. <laughs> you don't. You don't we're all you your... are inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're all Eeyores. Don't be an Eeyore, okay? Don't That's what be we're an Eeyore. saying. That'll be the description of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. It'll be the description. Episode um, three. And what Eeyore. was the other final thought? Oh, and you don't have to ask people if they need help. You can just do. Obviously, don't do anything for, crazy. For some people. The for people you know people well. That you're close with. Yes. Which obviously, if you're even... I definitely don't want random people coming over and being like, hey, we're going to take your dog. Because I don't have kids, so... Yeah. Well, obviously, if people are even thinking about being supportive, it's probably for somebody they care about. That's true. You get the gist of it. Yeah, but you can feel bad and want to do supportive things for people that you might not know as well, but you still feel bad for them. Just bring them food. Yes, yeah, bring them food. Just That's bring all them you food. Brown brownies or yes. manicotti. Anything. Oh yes. Really anything that's delicious. And they're not allergic to, which hopefully yeah. is nothing. So that's Pretty the much. point. So okay, that's the two points. Don't be an Eeyore and food is the love language of everybody. Pretty much. Pretty much. I don't really know anybody who's gonna turn down food except for probably my sister in law because of all of her allergies. <laughs> Well, that's a little different. I'm sure there are people that turn down food, but that's why I just have to make something that most people like. Mm-hmm. And take allergies into account. And it's the thought, you know, it's a thought that counts. Like, hey, I made you dinner so you didn't have to. Here you go. So I guess that's the uh, 
That's the main thing. Take I away, the takeaway is be supportive, but not too supportive. Not obnoxiously don't, supportive. And, and, yes, don't be a creeper supportive. Yes. Be a nice supportive. <laughs> Oh, and speaking of the touching on the food one more time, I don't know if everybody knows about this. I don't know if it's like a thing that we do in the military or, or if it's a thing that other people do. There's actually a website where you can set up a meal train for somebody that, you know, whatever, they're in the hospital, they're sick, somebody died, whatever. And people can literally put themselves into the schedule. I've got Wednesday at six. I've got Thursday at six. People can pick a day oh, that works so for them. Nice. So if, if you didn't have that resource... You just, it's just a meal train that you can set up for somebody if you wanted to. Sounds awesome. Yeah. You could also do that within a family. Like if somebody's having a, I mean, our family's just big enough where you could do that. Yeah. But they can coordinate. Um, I, that, but that's not necessarily everybody. Yeah. You could make a Facebook page, honestly, if uh, for a food train for somebody who needs it. Yeah, it's actually, I think it's actually um, a website. So you could just go to a website. It makes a separate link for you, and it'll, you know, Melissa's Meal Train. And then you sign up for the day that you want. Fun. Yeah, it's a really cool thing, and it's super easy to set up. Have you had to do one before? I have. I've done a couple different ones, yeah. Nice. Has anyone done them for you? No, but I haven't, I mean, we haven't really needed, we haven't really been in a situation where... It was yeah. needed. We haven't really been in a dire situation, knock on wood. We're all knocking. We're all knocking. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Rietta. I'm Connie. And thank you for listening. <laughs>